Hi, my name is Phyllis Y. Whitley, and if you have been spiritually victimized and traumatized, welcome to Spiritology Live, where I bring my number one Amazon book to life. Each episode, yes, is raw, spiritual, metaphysical, holistic space of consciousness for self-healing. As you learn how to break your religious shackles so you can master and manifest your promised land within today. Let's go. Hey, everybody. I know you are so excited. I had so many podcasts that I did for the year so far. I'm doing three a month and I have got great reviews of some of the podcasts that I did previously about death, the new you revelation, even about mediums and the community that people don't want to talk about the LGBTQ. Hey, I tell it like it is. I tell it raw and I'm not perfect. So we all got our opinions and we get our opinions from our experience and our education and from other sources. So with that being said, I actually was on time travel and each topic was from a Whisperwise team. Who was my Whisperwise team? Prayer Warriors. And we had some good, good, good juicy topics. Now we are going to part two, which is about time travel. And I'm going to give you a little bit about that. Before I was trying to be, I was kind of hesitant because a lot of people think, you know, when you start talking about the spiritual realm, a lot of people run, especially so-called Christians. They start running because they don't know nothing about the spiritual realm. And unfortunately, so they think everything that is out of the rim of what they see in front of them is about the devil. No, it's not. Okay? So, we talked about time travel. First, we talked about not too long ago with the shepherd slaughtering. Oh, you got to listen to that. Then we went to time travel. And I'm speaking of stuff that people don't know. I do have pastors, evangelists, and people who's trying to, entrepreneurs trying to get their platform together and, you know, spiritual, and they're trying to listen in. I'm giving them some good topics and ideas, but don't let those ideas be your ideas. You can grab from a table, but make it your own meal. There's no such thing as copycats. It's illusion. With that being said, time travel. This particular one's going to be a part two. And I did go into your past and I went into revision. This time I'm going to go really about your past, presence, and your future. We talked about the recap. You got to go listen to it. But we actually talked about how accidentally you can go into a dream and God will show you the future. You can accidentally go in your dream and remember the dog that bit you when you was five. You can go into a nightmare dream that you just holding on as a stronghold and it's preventing you from taking the train to two states down the road, whatever. I'm talking about a two states. I'm talking about going out of your state. And you don't want to because you had a nightmare about a train and you say, oh, I'm scared. So with that being said, those strongholds stop you. It, we talked about Joseph's dream. We talked about how the dreams are being killed. People can kill your dream. Family, especially family. It can be strangers. You can be somebody just, just you at the bus stop and you tell them your dream and they looking at you up and down like, you, you, really? That one person has told your dream and you let them. Now, how do we get back to the dreams? I, you need a counselor. You need somebody who know how to revise your whispers. Hello, you probably don't know nobody. That's why I'm here. My name is Phyllis. Did I introduce myself? What we're going to do is we're going to go dive in. What about time travel. We talked about the movie Inception, 2010, with Leonardo DiCaprio. And he played Cobbs, and they went, and they went to people, target people, subconscious mind, to get their secrets. So when they came back into reality from dreams, they knew everything. We actually went to 19, we ended on 1985 movie, black blockbuster movie, and that was by Michael J. Fox was the actor and they, everybody know about Back to the Future. When he went back to the future and, and changed his father courage and everything, 
he left with a dysfunctional family. But when he came back, because he tapped into that and changed some things, uh, we'd like to say revised it. When he came back, his parents was no longer poor and depressed and his mother was an alcoholic. So I have found the secret and the hack to going back there. I Am I different? No, because as you see, these movies are out there because Hollywood already knew. The masses knew about this stuff. That's why you got psychiatrists that hypnotize and different things and motivational speakers who it is. Let it be said, it is motivational speakers out there that get paid millions to go and help people forget something that might have dis- destroyed their past that is causing them not to go forth in the future. Well, Miss P, I mean, uh, give me an example. Well, of course, I'm going to give you an example. Because something you've seen, you might have seen caught your mother sleeping around with a man in the backyard or something. And then you say, uh-uh, uh-uh. In that stronghold, in your future, if you're a man, you would never want to marry a woman again. Vice versa. It is so much that happened in your past. The reason why I talk about the past because you do not know who you are till you go in your past. You got to go in your past. It's different cultures that listen to this. You better know your history of your past. How do you know that you're a diamond? Your culture is a diamond. You are a diamond. You won't know until you know how many how many errors it took to make you a diamond. You don't know what your ancestors went through. And then you would appreciate yourself and appreciate the people in front of you. This is probably one of the reasons why I say young people don't respect elderly because they don't even know what they had to go through. If they only knew. They take for granted what they have, you know. What, what, I mean, I couldn't imagine having to walk for miles to go to school. But I don't think my daughter could imagine getting on a train with a whole bunch of books and going to school and carrying it from school to a job and in the snow and then coming back. And by the time you, you turn around, the train don't want to come. You miss the train and you got to come back home. And it's so late at night, you can't even fix your food to start the next day. And you can't even start the next day because you got to go and you got to put your books on the table and study. Versus her just getting in the car and driving here and driving here. You know, every generation should go back because you need to appreciate your forefathers, your ancestors. So I went in the past. It's called time travel. Now, we are literally going to go to this scripture. Mark 15, 27, King James Version. And with him, they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. In my book, I said, chapter 21, help, I've been robbed. It says, the two thieves that was crucified with Jesus represent your past and your future thieves. Jesus is today now. That's why I teach you the promised land today. And the two thieves was fighting for attention so you can enjoy abundant life. This is why people in their past, well, Miss P, how do I, my power is my past rob. You live in regret. You look back and you just remember your losses. You don't even know who you are today because you're so busy looking back. Some of y'all being have been in relationships and the relationship was so bad, y'all stay in it. I've never gone to another relationship. You let one bad apple mess up your whole life. And then on your deathbed, you looking up saying, I mean, I should have just went with, with him. You know, I should have, should have, I could have, would have. If the person didn't work, it wasn't because something was wrong with you or him or her. It's just because that person wasn't supposed to be in your life. And I read that a season. And it's a reason. Some people you have to let go. They only in your life temporary. And I know you want to fight for somebody. If you are fighting and going against the current, you are literally, the universe is trying to tell you something. So what happens when you are robbed? You walk around like that. You walk around with regret, unfortunately. This is what I have to say in another quote. Yesterday can be your revision and tomorrow can only be your reaction for today. Let's look at Matthews 6.34 NIV. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. 
Tomorrow will have its own time. Tomorrow is, how can tomorrow worry about itself? You see what the Lord is trying to tell you. You don't worry about tomorrow. Hmm. You don't worry about yesterday, but you can revise it. How? Time travel, dreams, vision boards, fermentation. I didn't say occult boards. I said vision boards. You can bring your future into your today. You can become, act like you. You want to be a lawyer? Act like a lawyer. Dress for the success that you want to be. And you're just pulling it in. So when that time comes, you just be like, you go, you go to college, act like you you already have your degree. I mean, you don't walk around and brag, but you walk around and you appreciate the books and you learn everything in the books. And do you understand you are literally... Act like you know. You ever hear what they? You ever heard what they used to say? Act like you know. If you don't know, so those are the revisions that I had talked about. Now we are going to literally go to George Washington Carver. He had a quote: "Where there's no vision, there is no hope." Let's go ahead and put it this way: God said, talked about vision. He said, "Make it plain." He did say that your knowledge, without the knowledge, my people should perish, excuse me. You have to have knowledge. Let's go ahead and look at the vision. He said, write it plain and your angels will run with it. You know why? Because you have to have your vision somewhere. If it's not on the script of paper, it should be in your script of mind. You know, the mind can play tricks. You know, you literally have to write it down. And this is why people, they say, keep a journal. That's another way that you can have your dreams come to pass. And if you notice that the Bible, no joke, no joke, the Bible is always saying, and it came to pass. Whenever Jesus, he did something, it was, he did it because he said the prophet said it and he's, he came to make it come to pass. It's always saying, and it came to pass. You understand? In order for something to come to pass, it, something had to be said in the, in the past. What prophets, whether you believe they hear today or not, you don't have to believe it. How many times you said something? See, you can speak to your kids and prophesize over them when they're young and tell them you are going to be adopted. You are going to be this. And you don't want to be limited them to just a doctor. You can say you are going to be specializing in the medical field. And as time go by, they may go to something else. But I think you should just say you're going to be successful. Some people can be specific, but you can be say you're going to be successful. Then you have to sow those words. What do you have to do? You have to feed them, which I call soul food. You have to feed their spiritual mind, even when they sleep, even when they're in your belly. Even you, how do you do it? As you sleep, as you lay your head down, it don't take forever. You can let it literally feed yourself soul food. A lot of people, they have YouTube videos on just the word of God. Do you understand? There's millions of stuff that's out there that make you happy. That literally songs, you may have a song make you happy. Now, listen, ladies, do not, and men, don't go listen, don't go to sleep on those songs that remind you of old Harry and old Bessie. Don't do it. And I love my Motown songs, but some of them I cannot, I cannot listen to. I can't listen to it in the state of of trying to be a, a wife eventually. In your single state, you can't because it will go in your subconscious mind. Next minute, you know, your flesh take over and say, I am so lonely. Or then you just walk around with your head down. Nobody wants me. Nobody wants me. Do you see how different things that go to your ear gates can affect you? It can affect your future. That's why God said, don't go to sleep. You don't go to sleep angry. You know why? Because what's going to happen is you're going to wake up and you're going to manifest a lot of anger through what? Different people you, you meet that day, that next day. You ever got really pissed? Or somebody made you so mad. Then you go to work work the next day and your boss said you're fired. You said, well, where did this come from? Or you go outside and you look and your tire is flat. Be careful. Time travel. Your thoughts travel. See, when people hear time travel, they think, oh my goodness, she's talking about something weird that I'm going to go back. Oh yeah, you can't go back, but this is all spirit, honey. Your spirit is a spirit. Like God said, worship me in spirit and truth. Can't travel back. Psychiatrists hypnotize hypnotize people. Among other people, they hypnotize. They hypnotize you because they want to get in your subconscious mind and have you going back or doing things today that you would never think you would do. 
I've seen it on TV. Some people don't believe in that. So if you don't believe in that, let's move on. We can go into just sitting still. And if I told told you, can you remember the first boyfriend you had? I bet you can. I don't know what he looked like. I bet you can describe him and everything. How do I know you're not there in the past? Hello? If I said to you, describe your dream call, could you? Could you see yourself in it? When people master this traveling, when you visualize, or if you just get it and you put it on paper, you literally visualize. Now, let me tell you something. I know as many of you, uh, many of you that feel, I'm talking to the ladies here, don't go get no picture of your pastor and put it down as a vision board and say, come to me, baby. It ain't going to happen. See, when you're dealing with somebody else, a lot of I have found through my clients, when you desire, especially relationships, the time is sometimes seem long because you either didn't let it go and manifest on its own, or you're dealing with somebody else who have to finish and close their door in order to come and meet you. That's why when you meet somebody, they say, oh, I was going through a long divorce or, you you know, and they was going through something and you was going through something and, and y'all had to be clear. Now, what happened when they come together and they they not clear? They just they they have doors open and you know what happened? All those doors that's open going to come into their current relationship and it's a mess. It's a hot mess. This is why I get people calling me. Oh. So you have to be very, very careful to not only close those doors, but in the spiritual realm, yes, time travel. We're talking about time travel. You can go in your past. You can do it by one of the things that I didn't even mention last time is pure meditation. You don't have to be hypnotized. You can do meditation. And I do have a I do have a counseling um, called Persian, and this is three days. It used to be seven days. I may bring it back to seven days. But I have found with some of my clients, after we went into their past on the stronghold that was, was you know, it's very tricky because everybody can't do that. So this disclaimer here is, you know, I am not a, a medical physician, so I don't claim to be to cure anybody like that. You can't just go do it like that. You can get, you can hurt somebody. It's something that you had to be trained. It's something that you should have had mastering. You have some degrees of specialization in dealing with psychiatry, uh, social work. And I say social work because you know have to know the dynamics of what that person went through in a sense socially around them because some things trigger will harm that person. Some people can't go back in the past. So with that being said, you want to get a professional. I'm talking about mainly on the spiritual side because that's what I work is the spiritual side, the God side, your spirit that God have, that's in the image of God. And there's other things that I can say, but I would just like to say you yourself can use words, prophesize to your kids, prophesize to yourself, look in the mirror and say, I am uh, my promotion that I see that I am. You can do that, but then you have to have a preparation. It's a reason why Esther was going through preparation. See, Esther had to meet the king, but they put her through a whole purification. You see, now, her and a whole bunch of females, because somebody was going to be the queen, and she listened well, and she went through it. When you have a daughter, that daughter, you should be purifying her. Preparation for not only to be a a woman who owned things, a ownership, a entrepreneur, a business person, you should do this for your sons. And then if they, they say, hey, listen, I want a spouse. He said, okay, I believe you. God said if two or three will agree, he'd be in the midst of it. It is so many things that's sitting right there in the Bible, especially Proverbs. So you see how you can prepare. Preparation to me is literally... A lot of things that you're doing in the physical to bring the spiritual in, and the spiritual is going to manifest into the to the physical. I know that was rough what I just said, but you understand what I'm saying? The time travel. Now, in this time travel, we're going to go to Frequency. Frequency was a movie made in 2000, and we went into other movies earlier, 
in the other podcast. And this one was a science fiction thriller drama with Dennis Quaid. And the plot that they had was surrounded in New York City in 1969, I believe. And it was about a cop, a young boy named who grew up to be a cop, but he had a father who actually named Frank, who was a firefighter back in the days. But when it started, he went into a, he came home. He had the same house I believe his father had, and he had great memories of his dad, but his father was dead. He was mourning so hard over his father. And I do believe it was a radio in the back that his father had. And that radio kept making noise and whatever. And finally, when he got on it, I do believe his father was speaking to him. Where was his father? The father was in the past. Now, remember I said is Hollywood be having some of these movies that's really for just the masses? Because some of y'all look at it and say, isn't that beautiful? But you never look at it from a prophetic view. And I used to do prophetic view movies. And this is from one of my audio I, I did. I need to start it back up. And I take regular movies and make it tell you the prophetic, the spiritual part. Where, where is spirit in the movie? So in this particular movie, his father started talking to him. And I don't know if he was talking to his father or something. And he was telling his father what type of, he didn't know it was his father at first until they realized they was in different dimensions. One was in the 60s and the other one was somewhere else. And then they started realizing their name, the name, this was his dad. And he started leading him on and telling him what was getting ready to happen because he already went past the future. As he went by, he was helping his father change and revise that past that caused him to have a good outcome. He didn't know what the outcome was going to be because at the end of the movie, what happened was at the outcome was good that the whole family was together because he revised somebody running around doing something that they're not supposed to have did. And he even told his father some things that he don't need to do that because it was going to be a stronghold for him in the future and cause him an early death. So that picture ended, I'm not going to tell you, but it was good. What it was, was it was another way. I'm not telling you to go get a radio. It was telling you that the revision really changed that boy life. Now, I'm not saying that you can go to sleep. We never know what you, when this will happen. And you can revise something and bring somebody who, who's no longer here to life again. So don't get me wrong. What I'm saying to you is on a spiritual sense, you can go back and you can tear down that stronghold that's been hurting you. Because one of the things with him, he would never marry this. He was not married to this girl. It was a stronghold because what happened with his father and his mother. Now, after the outcome of revising, going back in frequency and a lot of stuff that they revised in the past, when they came back to today, he actually married that girl. So it's a lot of things that's, that's our strongholds. And we don't want, we, you know, you know, people say, well, you know, you in the past, you in the past. I have proof in the pudding of clients who literally let go of some of their strongholds. As time went by, they literally found out that it was like, I'm not even in the same place. I mean, the, you get divine connection, phone calls, whatever, because that thing that once bothered them didn't bother them anymore. You understand what I'm saying? So time travel, you can do it. You can do it. Don't go to your past and say, I'm, I'm doing time travel. You can do it through meditation of what it is that you want. Leave the past alone until you get a good coach, a good counselor that can walk you through these things. Until then, yes, you can do meditation safest things on vision boards, different things that you want to do. You can use your words. You can use your five senses. Instead of bringing in junk food into your system, you can use your five senses and look at all the houses that you desire. Go look at those houses, the big houses, if you live in an apartment and see what you're doing. You literally going in the future. Miss P, that ain't time. Trip. Yes, it is. It might not have worked for you, but when you go talk to somebody who say, hey, I manifested this house that I always wanted, ask them, well, where, where was it? 
in your dreams, yeah, they, they can tell you, they can describe it. Some of them can take out a picture that they had and they put it on their treasure map or board and they can say, this is the exact house that I went into. Some people can meet people who can tell them and describe their house. Where are they? They in your future. You can be in your future. Create your own house. Create your own job. That is the time travel I'm talking about. In the spirit realm, yes, I do believe you can time travel. You can go back. You can go back right now. We just did it earlier and even in the last one. Go back and close your eyes and dream of, I want you to start thinking about the first time you had a good score, a good grade. And when you looked at it and said, oh my goodness, I got it. Maybe an A, maybe a B from some of y'all. And just do you feel how good it was? How did the people around you react? Hopefully good. And then you can come out of that and open your eyes. Wasn't you in your past? But if you hold on to that and you were in college and you might be the adult in college, you want to hold on to that. And I bet you if you hold on to that thought and that feeling that you had with it, yes, secret is the feeling. No joke. And you hold on to that, you might be surprised when your next grade comes and it's an A or B. So you can't just meditate or just throw pictures up on your wall, your board. You have to work with it. You have to prepare, like Esther, your environment. They prepared all of these young women so they wouldn't go run in front of him and didn't know how to act like a queen. They prepared them to be queens. And then he had to choose. So that's why I said you can't go and you can't say when it's dealing with another human being, say, let me put a put something here for because I want that man. You know, you have to be careful when that man is in a relationship. You can't go claim another person. You can say, I like that person's character. I love the way that person dressed. I want a man like that. And then you will get whatever it is, the job that is similar to that. Do you see what I'm doing? You don't want to be mis- uh, copying up for Mr. and Mrs. Jones. That's why I can't stand to this day copycats. I don't even want to be working on my team. I hate competitors. You know, you can do better. I can do better. You can do and I can do better. Oh, I can. You got a diamond watch. I can get a diamond watch. Yes, you can get that. But don't, why try to settle and compete with the Jones? Why try to prove that your son, your daughter is better than somebody else's son and daughter? You don't put that spirit in your kids. They should compete only against themselves. I got an A. You know what, mom? I think I can do an A plus. So you you have to be very, very careful because when you're trying to keep up with Mr. Jones, that Jones spirit can kill you because you get depressed. I'm not like that person. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. You know, I'm not manly enough. You know, no, you go, you don't do that. You choose what it is that you want. God said you choose life and death. He didn't say go and choose somebody else's life and death. That's why you you have these people. I know growing up, I have heard so many young people, young women saying, you know, Miss P, she got my husband. Really? If that man belongs to you, you ain't got to do nothing. But go about your business and get yourself done. Go about your father's business and get your life together. And I have seen people divorce without the help of you. And they come back around and they come to that person. If that person is meant for you, let them go. They'll come back. If they don't come back, don't force it. And if you force it, you're going to get what you deserve. And you know what that is? The man will come back. You sleep with him and he's with the wife because you feel that he's supposed to be with you. And then he leave the wife, come and marry you. And then you are no good because he turned around and go get him somebody, a mistress. And then you know what that woman was going through. It happens all the time. Go get your own promised land. Don't go get nobody else's promised land. Don't try to compete with somebody else. When somebody get a prophecy, somebody need to hear this. Don't say, well, you know, you're going to get two cars. I'm going to go get three. Don't, 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 don't do it. Who are you competing with? You're not pleasing God. Everybody here for their own platform and their own reason and for a season. 
Make your father proud. Go out there and serve people. Whatever job you have, greatest among you are the servants. And with that being said, I hope you learned something. I know I gave some of the enders of these pictures, but it had to do with, yes, time travel. You can time travel in the spiritual realm. And how do you do that? There's many, many, many ways. If you need some more information, hey, you can find me. You can find me on phyllisWhitley.com. Thank you. Thank you for coming to my space. What's new? What's new is a little bit tired. (laughs) I'm a little bit like, hey, I did this. I finished. I finished this one called Time Travel. I just hope that those of you, I know that you got your book and I want you to share the book. Go out there and bless somebody with the book as a present and a gift. And I do have Wordology out there. You can go and get that book. I have a, I have coloring books out there. I have little, a lot of things. Go and look, look me up. Give it as a gift. And then just remember, I don't know who you know, so you have to share the podcast. Because I am making a difference. And if you want to make a difference, share it. Remember, is loving yourself is right. Why do you want to be wrong? I know I didn't say it that way. I'm just putting all kinds of things with that. You like it? Hmm. 